two points. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Wall. I'm a certified PPR pickleball instructor. Today we're going to do a lesson. Uh, we've got Karen here. Karen is a 2.5 level player uh, trying to get to the next level. So we're going to introduce a few smaller things, introduce the four main ingredients to pickleball, and then we'll move on from there. Before you know it, Karen will be getting a gold medal the next tournament. The first thing we're gonna start off with is dinking, starting off with the small game. What we had talked about initially is not taking a step back, if we, at all we can avoid that, or taking a step from side to side. We have our semicircle, we have our zone that we can reach. You can actually get to that zone by just shifting your weight. We're gonna work on dinking, and dinking is actually just hitting a non-attackable ball over the net into the non-volley zone so that somebody can't attack it from up high and volley it. So we'll work on that right now. We're gonna dink back and forth, just work on weight shift from side to side. Um, in hitting a dink, you're gonna use your entire body rather than just your wrist. Your wrist is a smaller muscle. It's much harder to control. If you can use your pendulum as your arm and your legs as you come up, it's much easier to control the shot and control the dink. So we'll work on that now. Good. Nice. Nice shot. We'll work on the body shift from side to side. Oh, sorry. Good get. Nice. Reset. Nice. Nice. Move you around a little bit for body shift. That's it. Perfect. That's it. Very good. Good get. Nice. Good shot. Nice. So that reminds me of something else. So it's called the non-volley zone because you can't be in here and take a volley. You can be in here any time that you want, as long as you don't volley out of it. The ball has to bounce first before you hit it. If you see that a ball is gonna go over and bounce, you can take a step in and be in the, um, in the kitchen uh, without having the ball have bounced yet, just to get ready for it and prepare. So you don't have to wait for it to bounce to get into the kitchen. So we'll start again. Nice. That's it. Nice. Very good. Nice. Nice. So as we had talked about before, also, if you can lean over, you can actually put your paddle out fairly far. If you can take that ball out of the air, much better to do that, take your opponent off balance a little bit. Um, once you get into a rhythm with thinking, if you can take it out of the air, you're gonna put your opponent in a bad position, which is what you're looking for, so then you can attack it. So the other thing that we'll do too, this is a good drill. So what you're trying to do is actually hit the seat of the chair. So you're trying to get it just over the top of the net. Let me move it back just a little bit onto the seat of the chair. Me too, it's sweaty. Good. I like the motion. Yes. Yes, very good. Nice. That's it, just right over the top of the net. Nice. Nice. So basically that's where you wanna to try to put it, kind of on the seat of that chair to move them around a little bit. That's it. Nice. Two points. Get an extra bonus for that. Nice. Very good. Good shot. Nice. That's it. 
Nice. Yep, perfect. That's it. Yep. Nice. Almost got it in again. So we'll go cross court now. So we'll do, it's the same thing, but we'll go cross court. Cross court is a little easier to dink because the edges of the net are 36 inches high. The center is only 34. So you've got two inches to work with going cross court. So we'll go this way across court. Same motion. Yes. Yep. Some more of legs and pendulum. That's it. Nice. Yep. Nice. A little bit lower. That's it. So just a quick uh, rule and word about rules. If you hit it and it hits the top of the net, drops in, and you dink it back over, you can reach far enough and you dink it back over, you have to get back behind the non-volley zone line and have your feet set in order to hit the next shot. So if it drops over and I hit it up and I'm back here and I'm jumping in the air and I hit it in the air and my feet aren't set, it's a fault. Okay. So if you get a smaller shot, you hit it back, I dink it and it's up. You can hit it directly at me because I'm going to have a hard time getting hit with a body shot. I'm going to have a hard time getting back. Um, so that's basically the smaller game, dinking and net play. Um, you're basically waiting for your opponent to leave it up a little bit or for them to make a mistake so that then you can put it away, either with an overhand or with a strong shot. And you already have a strong shot. I've seen it. Um, so that's a smaller game. When I warm up initially, this is what I start with. I start with dinking, and then I will move back three or four steps, and you stay there. I'll try to do that dink as well over the top, and now it becomes a drop. It's called a drop. I'm still trying to get it over the top and make an unattackable ball. What that's good for is, you know, the third shot drop. If you drop it from back here over the net and it's too far, and your opponent hits it back at you and you're stuck in no man's land, stop, plant your feet, reset it from here on that drop, then move your way up. So it's all about making your way up.